I really like the sport of disc golf. Okay, so maybe some of you guys can connect with me on that. I'm a huge football fan. I also like disc golf too. So when he says football, there, yeah. he's not talking about your football. By I'm the not way. talking about football. I'm talking about. <laughs> hold on, wait, wait, wait. Never mind. I'm not going to say that. I'm going to say it, bro, because this is part, this is part of who I am. Okay. Right. Until I have converted to a soccer fan, football fan, football fan, American football is real football. So they're going to hate me, aren't they? Yeah. Are they going to hate me? <laughs> I got so much. You're digging like, your own grave, buddy. Like, it was so supportive. Like the last video, all the comments are so great. I just, I probably just murdered myself. They're gonna be like, "Don't you ever bring this guy back?" Oh uh, no, no. So I wanted to show um, Corey some more of the beautiful game, which is what we call it, the beautiful game. That's that's like the name. People okay, call cool. It the beautiful game. Sweet. Uh, we're gonna watch. Um, you don't know any so you don't know anything about the sport. You don't you never seen it played. No, no, no. So I have seen it played, but only from the perspective of I was playing goalie with a bunch of kids in Mexico. Right. But you never like watched a game. <laughs> no, I don't know anything about like I don't know. I know I think so let me name some positions for you, okay? All right. Go for All it. right so you told me there's 11 on the field, right? Mm -hmm. On each side. So I'm going to name some positions. We know for a fact that there's a goalie. Mhm. Mm um, this might actually be really funny. I'm, I'm gonna try. <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, is there a striker? That's a thing. There's a striker. Okay, yeah. there's a striker. Um, I didn't know that, so you know more than me starting out already. I feel like in any ball sport, you have to have uh, like a ball that's actually actively moving all the time. You have to have somebody like a forward or something. Is that a, is that striker a is a forward? Striker got, is the forward. Well, no, you've got three forwards and okay. striker is your main guy who's going to be scoring the goals mostly like Messi and them he's the strike yes Messi's a striker okay. he is one of the the striker is the forward who is going to be the one initiating the attack mo most often okay so there's three but there's three total three in forwards. that position I've got four positions yeah. figured out okay so goalie striker two other forwards striker's just the, the head honcho he's mm -hmm. the LeBron James on the field uh, in, in retrospect the sports that I actually know um, <laughs> and I'm thinking Thinking so, there's got to be some offensive and defensive yeah. stuff going on. Think of think of the striker as the finisher. He's he's the person who finishes the play. So um, people are kicking to him to finish. So yeah. there's plays in soccer. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I mean, I'm gonna wind up liking this more than I think. Yeah. There, so there's tactics involved. That's that's sure. the thing that it, that got me is is realizing that there's tactics involved. They're there's, out here running around kicking a ball. Oh, so it seems that way. Right. But there's there's actually tactics that go on. There's different formations. There's you know, tiki taka. There's different types of like. It's more of a. It's more like strategic philosophies. So they okay. don't run set pieces. Sure. So, um, like in well, that's what they call a play. Like okay. so in American football, we run plays. Well, they're designed. Mm -hmm. Well, anything that they run in football that's designed is going to be a um a, what they call a set piece. Wow. So they don't really ever – it's it's not often that they run set pieces. Set pieces come off of, like, um, you know, somebody's throwing the ball in from the sideline. They'll run right. a set piece or something like that. But for the most part, like, when it's just constant playing, there is an element of improvisation, but there are tactics. There are, like – there are definitely things that the manager is letting – is, you know, okay. guiding. But, yeah, so okay. you've got – like, you're right. You've got the goalie. goalie you've got the three forwards. forwards. I feel like – and, and I'm really I'm really just drawn into basketball now. I feel like somebody's got to be the guy that you trust. Like every time the ball touches the field, if he gets it, he's the one running point. Like, is there a point or something like that? I'm not. I think what well, you're talking about someone who's like initiating the offense. Like like in like in basketball, there's one guy who, yeah, that initiates the offense every time it's it turns over to offense. If he's going to set up a play or if he's going to set up the way the ball is going to move around. He's the guy. He's the best handler on the field. Yeah, so it's going to be surprising. The person who initiates the offense most often is the goalkeeper. So the goalkeeper is telling telling the people where to be, like pushing them up on the field, telling them where they need to go, and he's distributing the what? ball. Yeah. So the goalkeeper is extremely important about getting the ball played into the – getting the team into the right play. So the goalkeeper has got to have a cannon on him. Yes. Dude. Yeah, and they'll they'll get the ball. Uh, there's a video. I have to. I haven't even reacted to it yet. Whoa, but man. apparently, apparently Tim Howard, who is an American who played um, in the Premier League, 
He's a goalkeeper, legendary goalkeeper, and he's one of the few players who's ever he scored a goal from his own goal. <laughs> he threw it from the goal, and it... I think he kicked it. But yeah. Oh crap! So they can kick it into yeah, the throw. It. They can oh, kick okay. it and throw. Yeah. Okay, so you're looking at like a like a a hybrid. If, if I, I mean, we if we had a player that could kick and throw accurately, <laughs> like in football, you're like, dude, this guy's the, the, yeah. the man. You know what I mean? So yeah. So he, so the goalkeeper <clears throat> is really involved in setting up the offense. The goalkeeper is um, so much more important than I thought. Yes, very, very important. The goalkeeper is very important because I'm thinking this guy's bored to death. You know, just sitting on one side of the field all day. No, in fact, you'll see a lot of times if the defense breaks down in any way and they get a chance to score the other team then the goalkeeper will be yelling and barking at people, and it's because he's the one who's kind of – he's setting people up to where they need to be. So so uh, the way I'm going to relate that, and for those of you who don't watch American football, you have no idea what I'm talking about right now, but this is going to make sense to Luke. Uh-huh. <clears throat> when you have your Mike linebacker who is, who is making sure the defense is set yep. the way they're supposed to be, and if they're not in between plays, he's yep. grabbing guys by the face mask. What did I tell you? I'm noticing this, yada, yada, yada. <laughs> So that's what the goal. goal I got some respect for the goalkeeper, baby. Goalkeeper is kind of like the the quarterback of the defense, and he's also, but he's like he sets the offense up too. So goalkeeper is really important, man. But as far as what you were talking about, as far as like somebody who is gonna have the ball at their feet, like is there is there a person that the goalkeeper is when he's setting up the offense? He's making sure that the ball lands in this guy's vicinity. No. Okay. So everyone on the field is gonna have equal equal ability to, to control the ball and dribble and things like that. And um, the midfielders, which that's – sorry, that's the – Well, I, th- that makes sense. You yeah. know, like uh, like if you're if you're in a transition-style game where all players are always playing, sounds like there needs to be somebody hanging out in midfield. Mm-hmm. So, that, so you, you know, have – you're going to have – the defensive players are going to be – you're going to have center backs. And this depends on if they're <laughs> – we're getting high level. It depends on if they're running like a four a four man defense or like because they're gonna. Oh, well, that's not too high level. Formations exist. There's formations. Right. I'll I'll look up the most popular football formations real okay. quick. So, I am yeah. I'm telling you right now. I am yeah on an American browser. You're gonna type in yeah, soccer soccer formations. Yeah, uh, I'm telling you right now. I'm learning so much about this that I did not know was a yeah. thing. So let's look. So here we got a four four two. I think is really common. So these would be your defenders, your midfielders, and your forwards. That's with two forwards. Um, depending on the offense that you run, you could run this. That um, only adds up to 10. Right, your goalkeeper is the Oh, goalkeeper. shoot, I'm yeah. dumb, sorry. Okay. No, you're good. You're good. So you could, they and they mm-hmm. don't They don't often include the goalkeeper in the formation. Interesting. Just, yeah. Is the goalkeeper allowed to leave his little white box? Yep. Uh, he can, the goalkeeper can run all the way down to the other goal if he wants. Wow. It's just he's leaving his goal unprotected. Sure. So, but. so so what's the purpose of the I, – and we're all over the place right now. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's good. I'm just looking at this like I don't think I've ever like really thought about a soccer field before. Yeah, so the purpose of the um, box that the goalkeeper stays in, um, it's in that box is the only place he's allowed to touch the ball with his hands. So if he gets outside of that box, he is just like everyone else has to play the game with his feet. So in that box, the goalkeeper only can touch the ball with wow. his hands. And so. and so there's two boxes, right? You got this little bitty uh-huh. interior one and then this big one. We're talking about the the big box. He can the leave, big box. Yeah, okay. he can anywhere in that box. He can use he can use his hands. So what's the purpose of the small box? I don't know. Okay, <laughs> good All question. Right. Hey, can y'all answer that for <laughs> yeah. us? Tell me what the purpose of that small box is, because now I'm intrigued. Yeah, I have no idea what happens within that little tiny box. I haven't. It hasn't come up yet in my watching the game. Okay. But but yeah, so you'd have a typical. You know, you got your goalkeeper at the back of the defense, and then you have two center backs, okay. which are defenders. They're defensive backs. Yeah. And their job is, man, like, they've got to get back on defense so that they can be, you know, the defenders. And, and these guys are expected also to travel down the field as well? Somewhat, but they're going to always stay towards the back of the formation. Okay. Now, the right backs and the left backs, will they'll travel all the way up the field. So, a lot Dang. of times in, in, a, um, in a certain play or whatever – They'll distribute the ball, and then maybe one of the right – I think they call them the right winger or the left winger or whatever. Mm-hmm. They're going to run – the. they can run the length of the pitch, really. They can run all the way up. Um, yeah. So it depends on what formation you're running, but typically the positions are going to be goalkeeper, uh, four defenders, center backs, and um, left and right backs. Then you're going to have your defensive midfielder, your center midfielders, and your, like, attacking midfielder. Okay. And then so striker. So soccer is a big field. Yes. You only got 
22 guys in total, really 20 running around. Yeah. So, are there ever instances like in basketball where you get a rebound and somebody launches it down the field and or down the court and it's a fast break and there's just one person ahead of everybody? You can't do that because there's this this little annoying rule called offside. Okay, offside. It, this is why the games are so low, low scoring, and well, it's complex. Well, one of the reasons. So offside is an interesting rule that is very hard to understand at first. Uh, I I understand it, but so basically, um, to see if I can explain it in an easy way. So notice you have these two uh, center backs here. Uh-huh. Okay, if you had a player attacking towards the goal, and he got behind the center backs, he's offside. So you cannot pass to a player who is past that offside line. Can you? He run? has to has he has to have one at least, well, at least one defender and the goalkeeper on the other side at all times. So he cannot so, so like, to to pass it to somebody. But so but this guy okay if so, he has the ball he can he can so pass he can him. run right by he him. can run right past okay him. all right that makes that makes a little bit more sense it's like how well the, a good defense would be don't move yeah you well, know like stay but, at, stay but, half field so you couldn't have a fast break because um because you can't pass to a player who's passed that offside line that makes sense so um man that's really that's interesting. Another thing about that too is if you were say you were like hanging out over here on this this uh, um, left side of the pitch, mm-hmm. and you were to take off like you were going to do a fast break, um, I can pass it to you as long as the pass as long I can pass it to you if you go off sides as long as the pass starts while you're still on side. So, so you can lead. You can a pass. get. You can get. A, a, you can lead the pass. In fact, that's what I'll show you. I'll so, show you. So about. you can. You can't have a traditional fast break, but you kind of can. Yeah. Like like if I'm now this would take you know Patrick Mahomes style goalie here, but if I'm the goalie and I know mm-hmm. that there's a mismatch on the left here, yep. that this guy has some burners and the guy that they've got playing mm-hmm. up defending him is trash, I can lead him for a mile. As long as as long as the pass is initiated before he's offside, it's fine. Okay. So he can, yeah. If you want to lead him and, and you're you're anticipating that he's going to be able to. But but the danger zone is, you also have these other guys. You also got other guys who, if in that if that ball is getting launched, they have so much more time to react to it and, and play it. So it's so, really not even worth it, really. So what I see most often happening is the goalkeeper just punting the ball really deep and letting his guys position themselves. You know they're gonna receive it with their chest most likely, or go up with their head and try to try to play it down. So goalkeepers are really accurate, but oftentimes it doesn't pan out correctly because mm. you know um, the, the players are you know both fighting for the ball. Sure. And you can position yourself, you can fight and jockey for position. So there's a lot of times where if the ball is not just perfectly placed. You know, another guy's gonna step up and grab it. Is there things like holding and pass interference type calls? Yeah, you can't intentionally like pull a guy and like pull him off of his spot, but sure. you can bump him off of his spot. So you so, use your your flipper. Yeah, you. Well, I don't. I don't know if you could actually use your arm, but you can bump and okay. and you can you can realistically you can do some of that. I'm sure a lot of this is gonna be answered by the time I actually see it played. Yeah, this is just cool, kind of getting to talk to you because <clears throat> I'm, I'm feel like I'm like very elementary. Yeah. And it's like I'm taking a crash course into soccer. And knowing all of this is going to actually make it a little bit more enjoyable for me to, to kind of see what's going on. And this is a lot of pressure. i got to figure out the first video for you to watch. I mean, this is this is the first one. I'm going to show you the art of defending because I know that you're going to – you're gonna. I know you specifically are going to um, love this. All right. So, uh, yeah, this – I think it's this video. Yeah. And this is like teaching me fundamentals. Uh, foot- no, oh, it's this one right football? here. Old school. Yeah, you know this will not teach you fundamentals. It'll oh, just okay. show you kind some, of some cool stuff. Are these yeah. like clips of like awesome plays and stuff? Yeah, sweet. So these are going to be like some highlights, but I've explained a little bit about what's going on already. So mm-hmm. hopefully that'll um, that'll help. Nine point one million views. Yeah. Wow. If you need to pause and like ask something, oh, I will. This'll yeah, be yeah. great. Yeah, yeah. But you're basically just going to see some of the best defensive plays. Oh, and by the way. There's not a, not gonna be audio because uh, copyright. So I'm sure that this got gotcha. Because I've already reacted to this on my channel, and I had to put my own music underneath it. That, because, that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. But so anyway, so these are players well, that I'm gonna take these off. Yeah. Well, the music will show up, but actually, it's fine to just 
Yeah, so some of these players, uh, that's that guy that was just shown right yeah, there. The head. So yeah. what's, okay, so <laughs> I almost said the head, but what's it's called the, a header? It's called a header. It's called a header. Yeah. Is this a Chester? No, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I've never heard it called a Chester. <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm just going with the. Are we all? You know, is it a ER five? I don't know. I don't know. What the, it's just a first touch, I guess. Like, what what is the technical term for that? Surely it's not a Chester. When you yeah. Yeah. So that's a header, but if you catch it with any other part of your body, it's just, I guess, uh, I've only heard it called the first touch. Like okay. The All first right. touch that you got. All right. But here we go. Um, yeah, some of these players, that, that guy right there, who uh-huh. is, um, he is, uh, he plays for Liverpool. Okay. Um, he destroyed the USA and the World Cup. He played for the Netherlands. Mm. Um, he's a excellent defender and he'll he'll be featured a lot in this so, uh, so liverpool is one of the upper echelon mm-hmm. okay liverpool yeah liverpool is they're, they're a, a good club dude he is shredded yeah man yep so uh so this is going to be good defensive plays now that's that's Dang. a tackle right there and you so can go in for the ball it's legal it's legal you can take a guy's legs out as long as you're dude, making a play on the ball look at that footwork yeah Dang. Yep. Good stuff. So, um. Oh, the goalie went. Oh, bro. Yeah. See, there's the audio. Gotcha. Great defense right there. Look, that he hit it with a header to back his goalkeeper up. Wow. And just the accuracy of the tackles, man. Um, that, that's what I was calling his attack. <laughs> yeah. Bro, he just sniped that. Yeah, so he just he slid, stopped the ball, and it in its tracks. And the ball stays right in this place. That is – How do you have that kind of control? S- I want you to know how hard that is to well, do. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm just thinking about, like, I, I don't even know. I You know, I roll the ball around with my daughter all the time, and sometimes she'll roll it past me, yeah. and I'm, like, trying to, you know – I can't even do that with a little little bitty rolly ball. Like, to think of a full-size soccer ball. Yeah. Well, to, so when, when we're in there playing um, – and I play – Pretty much every day of the week now, um, when they're kick, when it's coming fast, when it's fast paced, that ball is rolling. To be able to stop it on a dime and it to stay in its place is a, immense skill. Every time I have a first touch, it bounces off and it'll it'll take off. So I'm getting better at it. But yeah. for him to be able to to slide, stop the ball, and then get up, and he's got control of it, and he can you know pass Dude. it. It's, it's crazy. Maybe I should put the headphones back on. Yeah. Dang. It's just excellent defense, man. Dude. Yep. He hey, hopped look, him and he down. He keeps the ball at his foot. <laughs> this is messy right here. One of the, but he gets uh, tackled. <laughs> Yep. Bro, okay, <laughs> all right. So this this reminds me of uh, you've seen the DK Metcalf video where got those interception. DK Metcalf's a receiver yeah. and he is just hauling down yeah. the field and ends up having a having a uh, touchdown save and tackle. Yeah, you know, on a defender that had no clue. And so like I see this, this guy has no idea that this dude is hauling. Yeah, yeah. beside him, you know, he's just adrenaline fueled dribbling down the field and that's what it's called, right? Dribbling, dribbling yeah. cool. And uh, and he just gets sniped and look at. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Just straight up. All, yeah. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Um, Dude, the determination here. Wow. Yep. And it's all and see, ball. Yeah, and see, sometimes, like, I don't understand. Because sometimes they'll still call that if you're sliding underneath a guy from behind. Mm-hmm. Um, from what I understand, and someone can please help me in the comments. Some people have tried to, to direct me on this, but. Sometimes that's a call and sometimes it's not, and I'm not sure why. But I, from what I understand, pretty much you can do anything as long as you're you're making a play on the ball. It, it might be a rule that says that uh, that if you are sliding from behind, you actually have to touch the ball. Yeah, and I don't know. That I, that sounds right. You know what I mean? Like that that, that sounds like that seems congruent with what I've seen. Mm-hmm. Like I've, it seems like that when they're making tackles, they're vicious and a little, yeah. but they're making a play on that ball mm-hmm. and not for the legs. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, because the, the true determiner of did he go for the ball, dang, son, yep. <laughs> did he go for the ball as he actually touched the ball, right? right. Dude, yeah. he – wow. Yeah. Bro, oh, you see yeah. how quick he got up? Yes, I know. So, the ball stays at his foot and he's up and dang. controls the ball. It's so difficult to do. He's an excellent 
Excellent tackle. <laughs> like, Dude. I, that one it might be my favorite. I'm backing up. This is at what, two minutes? Yeah. Look at how, okay. Look how far so, away he is. Yeah, and then. Skirt! But he keeps the ball in bounds. Yeah. Stands back up. You <laughs> see that like, little nudge with his foot, too, yes. to make sure? Dang, dude. Yeah. And there's, there's like, an art to these tackles, too, because they're sliding, and they're sliding at angles to which yeah. they – see, he slides and he kicks back. Bro, I bet there's some brutal injuries that come from trying to do that stuff. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Has anybody accidentally scored? Like, what happens if you accidentally score on the goal? Like, it's, it's called the other an team. own goal. Yeah. It's the other team's point? Yep. Okay. Yeah, and Does then, that happen often? Uh, own goals happen. I mean, it's not uncommon. There's that guy. Yeah, that's uh, – what is his name? Good grief. Mama, there goes that man again. I know this guy. What you want me to Google name? him real quick? No, I know his name. Everybody shame Luke for not knowing who that is. I have reacted to him so many times. <laughs> what the heck is his name? Uh, Van Dyke. Van Dyke. Uh, yeah. Van Dyke. Totally, I knew that. Totally. Yeah, I can't I remember his first name. I didn't name. know that. Um, anyway, what was I saying? I got I, distracted. I don't know, bro. I got distracted. That's Kylian Mbappe right there. Um, he's one of the best players in the world. Mbappe, I've heard that Mbappe name. is amazing. He's very, very young. Yeah, we'll get there. Okay. Dang. So, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I was trying to tell you about own goals. You were asking oh, about yeah, yeah, own yeah. goals yeah, yeah. and how often those happen. Uh -huh. So I would liken it in American football to how um, a safety is not – it doesn't happen often, but – you know, you have a handful of safeties that happen every mm -hmm. year. Yeah, yeah. So it's not uncommon to have, see a safety, but you don't expect to see a safety in a game. Like, I'm right. an entire season without a Cowboys safety this year. But there were safeties all throughout the league. So, right. So an own goal is kind of the similar thing. It's like it doesn't happen often. It actually might happen a little more often than a safety. But. So, so and just from my basic understanding, this seems like this would be the case. If I'm responsible for kicking the ball out of bounds, it's the other team's ball No. Wait, say that again. So, like, <clears throat> in this case, this guy slides. We're at the two. Oh, yeah. If the if you're the last person to touch the ball before it goes out of bounds, it's there. Okay. Just make and sure. they, wherever that foul is or wherever that is, they take the ball there and they throw it in. By that, so, like, basketball. So, what, what makes Messi an incredible player? Is it just the amount of times he can score? Yeah. All right. So, game? now that we've watched – I'm not uh, – well, We're four minutes in. I've seen enough. Right? Editing yeah. will be all over the place. <laughs> Please pray for me as I edit this, but <laughs> – but uh, yeah, we got to watch Messi now, so you can see. Uh, a little and bit. now, in reg like this is like, is he the greatest soccer player ever? I believe. I okay. believe so. Um, uh, so there's gonna I be know, a Messi versus physics. Yes. Okay. There's gonna be an argument on mm. on this. Virtually most of the internet and most people alive now are in agreement that Lionel Messi is the greatest. He's the goat. So I'm saying his name wrong. Le you said Lionel. Lionel. Messi. I call him Lionel. Yeah, I mean, that's how we would pronounce it, but yeah. Lionel. Lionel. I want to respect him, so Lionel. Lionel, yeah. Lionel so Messi. He, um, yeah, I, I believe he's the greatest that's ever played. There's a There was a debate for a long time between him and Cristiano Ronaldo. Right, Ronaldo. That's another yeah. name I'm familiar with. Yeah, Ronaldo. So here's how I put it. Um, Ronaldo is the workhorse. He puts in so much, like, like – time and effort into his training and his like he's the workhorse work work ethic think kobe bryant kind of player mm, okay like he just really the mama mentality yeah, yeah that's that's ronaldo and i love that mentality so i really i really like ronaldo too but messi is like the natural he's like the guy that has just this ungodly freakish talent. ability yeah. just like and he works hard too but it's not like obviously to be the greatest in, in a sport you've got to work hard but he's just like he just has this magic to him when he plays. Wow. It's different than Ronaldo. Ronaldo doesn't have the same kind of, in my opinion, doesn't have the same kind of magic. So I put um, I put Messi as the, the greatest. But there's also Pele and Maradona, which are older players. Pe Pele, uh, for some reason that name sounds familiar. He won a ton of championships. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah so Pele, Pele was a um, – he won World Cups. He won World Cups, three sorry. World Cups. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Well, th there's so many different trophies. In but World Cups like the pinnacle of soccer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So there are there are all kinds of different trophies. He won a lot of. How often is the World Cup played? Every four years. Every four years. Okay. Yeah. So Messi just won his first one this last year. Mm. It was a big deal because there was a lot of conversation. Like, is he the goat? Well, he's never won a World Cup. Has Ronaldo he's won, won one? 
N- no, neither oh, okay. one of neither one of them had, but they had won every other accolade that there is to win. Like right. every other trophy they had won, all all of the scoring records they had, they had just you know, and so they were both looking for that World Cup, and Messi finally won it last wow, year that's in awesome. a very intense game. I watched that game; it was intense. Man. But all right, so Messi versus physics. This will kind of give you a, a picture of why he's the greatest. Take Let's the see moon it. And all is this the announcer? Dude, I'm loving that accent. Yeah. Beats the laws of physics. What? The laws of physics, but, they but they don't know him. <laughs> no, that's the <laughs> that curvature, man. Yeah. This man, he'd be saying, Boy, was I wrong. What? This is what yeah. Einstein called a spooky action over distance. That's what he would I would hate being a guy on the other end of that. Yeah. It's like, what are it's you doing? Like, yeah. Isaac it's perfectly. Newton this this play. From up above looks down and says, so that right there isn't a penalty? I think that's a penalty. <laughs> but <laughs> I didn't get called. I would call it. Jesus <laughs> Yeah, they so so a penalty gets called. Hold on. Okay, if a penalty gets, gets called, it's not it's not dead. So, yes. So technically, there's a difference between the a, a penalty is happens in within that box. So time out in what box? The the white box around the goal. Oh, okay. So if you're in that that penalty box, basically what they call it, and you get fouled in that box, then you get a free kick, a penalty, a free, kick. A free throw. Yeah, basically scoring you plays. versus the goal goalie. Okay. And most people score on penalties. Like it's very, it's it's often that you score on a penalty. But um, if you have a penalty that takes place outside of that box, so like say out here, they just call it a free kick. So you're awarded a free free kick. You get to kick the ball, whether you pass it. You have a free chance to advance the ball. So mm-hmm. what he just did, instead of free kicking it over and passing and setting up a new play, he just took off. Mm. So. You know he's trying to get them out of position. So, so you have a cho- you have the choice. Mm-hmm. You have the choice. You you get the ball stays where it's at until you decide to touch it. And so you can either use your use that to have another player come over and take the the free kick or. Bro, whatever. that's cool. I so, like the I like the creative freedom there because like you can think about it for a second. Yeah. Right. Um, so instead of setting up for a normal free kick, he's just like, I'm gonna take this. it. Yeah, I'm and, gonna go. and get them off and get them uh, out of position. So. That guy did not like Messi if he was grabbing him like that. Oh no, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of he had been, he had, he had to have been kicking his butt for a long time uh-huh. that night for him yeah. to be doing that. It's the only the thing people can do to stop him sometimes. It's amazing. What in the world? Like when the ball's nearby, he's like, "That's mine." Yep. He stays upright. This man. Look at the like. Look at the physicality with, and not using his hands, bro. Yeah. you can't touch it with your hands. That's a good one. His balance is nuts. Yeah, I'm sure there's a knack in that. Well, look at the strike, Kevin, to hold off the challenge, and then running at the four defenders inside, picks the spot. Oh, hard do you stop this little? What in the world? The red yeah. read as well. He's as quick with the ball as he is without it. How old is Messi? He is uh, 38, wow, so He's been around for a minute. Yeah, he started playing professionally at 17. What in the world? You don't yeah. measure that by statistics. It's immeasurable. When you see this run again, Phil Shane, and your statistics, you tell me, how do you measure somebody that could balance a balloon in a wind tunnel on a needle? <laughs> what because in the world? Messi is capable Dude. of yeah. that. And so what the announcer just said is actually kind of true. Like, the dude, um, you can you can take all of the statistics that he has, but you can't measure these moments where he's just kind of yeah, like yeah. making people look silly by running around them. Like, there's no statistic for that. Well, it's the it's the whole argument that that people try to use all the time. You know, Michael Jordan and LeBron James. They're like, yeah, well, Michael has has more championships, and it's like, okay, yeah, and I. But when you go back and watch film. Who Michael Jordan was playing against, right? Uh, and now I'm about to really show my hand here because I think LeBron James is the greatest basketball player. Oh, we are, right. we are. We can argue about this on an uh, episode one day. We can do it, all right? And we can watch yeah. highlight videos. I think I think Michael Jordan was scoring on uh, people who just got hired from uh, Kroger Grocery Line. Yeah. Right? I think LeBron James is playing against real athletes. And so uh, <laughs> I just I feel like I'm angering you. 
But anyway, so 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 in this in that case, like when you look at the intangibles, like these are things that you can't uh-huh. you cannot record in a book anywhere. Like you just you just have to watch the film. Right. Like you can't. There's there's nothing that you can put in a statistical column that will measure mm-hmm. the X factor that LeBron James has when he steps on the court. You can you can take that all the all the strengths and everything, all the stats and everything like that, put it on another player, and there's just something different about him. Yeah, right. And then you get you get guys like that all the time. Uh, uh, Patrick Mahomes is a huge mm-hmm. a huge version of that. He just won the Super Bowl uh, for the Kansas City Chiefs. Mahomes did not have great stats that game, but he is a game facilitator. And right. the whole time you're watching the game, you're just mad because you're like, especially if you weren't pulling for the Chiefs, because you're like, he just makes me mad. Like yeah. I don't understand how he keeps doing the stuff that he's doing. And yeah. it's frustrating. So it seems like Messi is that guy. Like he's got that 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 just that extra little edge. That, yeah. Well, that, the, and the thing that you can measure, the mm-hmm. thing is, you can't measure a lot of this stuff. Mm-hmm. However, this as far as the statistics go, he's you know scored. Is he putting out like Randy Moss video game? Oh you know, yeah, like Randy Moss. Jerry yeah, he scored stuff. in a calendar year. Now this is a wild statistic. I didn't understand it back then. Uh huh. He scored ninety goals in a calendar year before, which is and, wild. And that's like people don't do that. People don't do that. What's the average like? Not don't give me the average. Give me like what are good players scoring on an average year? All right, let's look. Let's look up. Uh, let's look this up. This video is. This video doesn't have to be a straightforward reaction. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, We're, I'm having fun, man. Yeah, I'm let's having look a lot of fun. Messi's scoring statistics, and we'll have to probably kill it after this. this. Yeah, but um, yeah. Okay, so um, I'm just looking it up real quick. Messi has. Appeared in 856 games. He's played 69,505 minutes. He's scored 697 goals. So think about this. He's been playing for. You know, he's almost scored a goal in every game he's played in. Almost. There's been a hundred or so games that he hasn't scored. Yeah. Yeah. So that, but see, that's that's a big deal because Ronaldo's over here. He's scored 725. So they're they're pretty neck and neck on this. Uh, but he's had more appearances. Yeah, Ronaldo's played in more games. Yeah. So, any anyway, assist, 351 assist. An assist is, you know, just like in basketball. Mm-hmm, except uh, an assist, they're a little more gracious with assists in um, in football, soccer. Because in basketball, if it like if you have the ball for like two or three seconds, it's no longer an assist. Right. But, you know. Well, it makes sense because you need just a little bit to kind of dribble and kick. It's a, a huge field, right? Yeah. So, hold on. Ch- show me this. What are hat tricks? I don't hat know what trick that is. Hat trick is uh, if you've scored three goals in one game, that's a hat trick. So, he's had what? 54 hat tricks where he's scored, you know, 54 games. He's had more than three or more goals. Um, he's won 34 trophies, domestic and international trophies. Dang. Uh, six Ballon d'Ors, which is basically like the award for the best player in the world. So, like, they have, like, of, of out of all of the leagues, out of all of the different... This is more prestigious than MVP and Heisman. So right, right, like because it, is... it incorporates every league that plays the game. Dang, dude. And he's won six of those. Cristiano Ronaldo's won five. European Golden Boot, six of them. Which is... I'm not, I, I'm not sure. I, Golden Boot, it, it goes to the best goal scorer, I, I believe. So, okay. I'm not exactly sure how that's chosen. But... <laughs> He has 1.27 goals plus assists per 90 minutes. So he's basically like he's very influential in the game. If he's not scoring, he's facilitating who's going to score. Exactly. Dang. He is very very involved. He's, I think he's the greatest that's ever played. Um, Messi's and the crazy thing is he's five foot seven. He doesn't look like he's just this. He doesn't look five foot seven in game. You know? No, he plays a lot bigger. Than like you, you see this guy out, and you don't. I mean, the way he like cuts his hair and stuff like that. You see him out, and you're like, that's yeah. an average dude. Just a normal yeah, guy. Just a normal guy. <laughs> so that's just some fun, some fun little videos. I like doing these, especially having you here because we can yeah. just talk about the sport. Yeah, uh, and I, I feel like it's it's really awesome for me because this is like. This is like having classroom access. Like if I went and took a class on, on soccer, but the only difference is I'm the only student in the class and I can ask whatever I want. And, uh, and you, I know a little. <laughs> yeah, well, you, you've, I mean, you've answered. And I think these, these guys were right uh, in the comments on the last video. Uh, I don't know where you started, but if you started where I'm at now, for you to be able to answer all the things that you were answering in the last video yeah. is astonishing. I've learned a lot in four months. Like it, I really, like I took it, like when I started getting into it, I realized I loved it. Mm-hmm. Like, and they're not wrong. I, I'm gonna try to. Um, 
I'm, you know, shadowing the soccer coach at my school. Like, cool. Like, I want to be involved in this sport. Like, yeah, it's probably, like I said in the last video, it's tied with American football as my favorite sport. Like, I love it. it they're very they're similar. Like, you can see kind of when you see them fighting for position thing, you can kind of see the similarities. Something about being on a field with a ball mm -hmm. and running around full speed. Yeah. Those kinds of sports just appealed to me. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, it's like uh, like I'm sure I would get into other sports as well mm -hmm. if I just took the time. Uh, I just grew up. There's just like uh, – and, and this happens with everybody, right? Uh, most of you guys are never going to watch a football game, just like American football game, just off the simple basis of, one, you have no interest in it, and two, you probably grew up watching soccer. Right. Like one of your oldest memories is you sitting in your dad's lap or something like that at a game, and you are like cheering for your team, and they scored a goal, and you're like, yes – like for me, I grew up watching football, American football, right. and so that's all. That's what I did. That's what I played. Like when we went outside to play, everybody had a football. Everybody was throwing it. That's just like what right. we did. Nobody had a soccer ball in my neighborhood, and so like it's as much a part of American culture as football or soccer is for their culture. Yeah, that's exactly right. what it sounds like. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's it's America's game. I mean, it really is. Everybody says uh, baseball is America's favorite pastime, but like Ugh. when you. Nobody likes Nobody likes to watch baseball. That's why I call it a pastime. You fall asleep on the couch watching that stuff. But football is where it's at. Yeah. And so to, to kind of see that that's like the same – they get yeah. that – even more, though, because you're – like this this football yeah. here is much bigger They're easily – wise And, and I, I don't say this as a dig to Americans. No. They're easily more passionate about it than I've ever seen. I, I saw a video one time of a riot that broke out outside of a game People beating the crap out of each other yeah. over a football game. Yeah. In, in like in somewhere in Europe, right? Yeah. And so I'm like, these guys might be I watched a Champions League game the other day and there were fires set in the in the stands. Like there's smoke all over the field and it's because they've got flares and stuff. You're not supposed to do that. <laughs> yeah, but, you're not supposed to do that. But like what? they have the, there's these groups called ultras, which okay. are basically like street gangs. For their club. Oh my gosh! And bro. so, have you ever you ever heard of Buffalo Bills Mafia? Yeah, the Bills Mafia. So they like call the, them the Mafia. Yeah. Like, so wow. there's a group of fans that are insane. Yeah. Well, yeah. The the ultras in in football are like that. So they they'll, they'll this is, light these fires are militias, in the stands. Essentially, they'll tear they'll tear um seats out of the stadium and beat people with them. Like it's like so. I watched a video of the ultras. I particularly I don't care for it. I like just watching the sport. Sure. But. I was watching this video about the ultras, and I was like, I want to know some of the historic moments that are happening here because this looks like insane. Because mm -hmm. for me, if we ever saw an outbreak like that or a riot in a game, like that's like a part of like that's news, mm -hmm. like you know, malice at the palace type thing. Like, yeah, that's well, a that's big deal. that's headlining. Like they're gonna right. stop the game. So I like, say, what are these historic moments that these fans are so worked up for? And every single person in the comments goes. No historic moments here. That's just a normal Saturday. <laughs> it's like just a typical Saturday. So like this is just like they're not something. They're just like ah, oh, that's just what they do. Yeah, it, authorities have have really tamed it down a good deal. So it's not like there's going to be an episode of Welcome to Wrexham that deals with what's called hooligan. Wow. The word hooligan. If you've ever, we use yeah. it a lot. Hooligan. Yeah, yeah. It comes from football. Wow. So it comes from this yeah. very idea. Hooligan. Hooligan is quite the. Uh, the the insult because it's not a very like real it's not really used in in a lot of conversation but to get called a hooligan is like you're like really saying like this person just be acting up bro yeah yeah you know so anyway uh this is awesome yeah we're gonna continue doing these like podcast style uh yeah. videos if you enjoy these where we're just kind of chatting about it and eventually it would be great to do like a live watching of a game that would be Dude, really fun yeah especially um, to have like to interact with some of you guys and see those comments yeah that would be cool my, my watch alongs are always a, a blast so yeah uh thank you guys for all that you do supporting the channel i do have a link for patreon down in the description uh, we're going to be watching welcome to wrexham yep. there for the patreon members it's really cheap like seriously even on the entry level it's only a dollar a month so that's like what twelve dollars out of the year yeah. that's basically like one fast food meal a year if you can like yeah you could like not go to I don't know McDonald's once. Is that that's like a that's a worldwide chain? They have McDonald's. Yeah, yeah McDonald's. Yeah. If you like just skip McDonald's one time this year, yeah, and just give that money to me, <laughs> <laughs> you could watch yeah, uh, uh, Welcome to Rex, and we're gonna watch that together. Anyway, um, we'll see you guys in the next video. Deuces.